Hi, my name is Nishad, so I'm Nathan Shabon, and this is Spurs Video Podcast. Um, going to talk about the obviously the NLB tomorrow, probably one of the most important games, and you know, probably the most important game for most, well, only nearly all, 99% of Spurs fans, and um, I'm going to talk about how I think we should set up. And um, I was talking to Super Spurs because I had some ideas about how, you know, about my thoughts, and Super Spurs being a real loyal guy, he's been, you know, watched the whole of my videos, and he was always commenting. And he asked me a question about what I thought about AVB, and I, w- I will talk about him as well. So let's talk about tomorrow. My lineup, and this is just my lineup anyway. I'm thinking like a 4-3-3 slash 4-5-1 of flexible formation. This is if Jermaine Defoe's out. Um, uh, and again, I don't know the four injuries or anything, so I'm just going. I'm assuming if Carl Walker, I'm not sure about Carl Walker or Aaron Lennon. So again, you know, but I'm assuming if those guys are fit. Because I'm you know, hoping they are anyway, or Carl Norton, then I just go from there. So I'll go Hugo Lloris in goal, so ABP won't start him, but that's how I'd go with. I'd go the back four of Carl Walker or Carl Norton, uh, William Gallas, uh, Corker, uh, who, by the way, congratulations, you know, scoring your debut for England, you know, and basically keeping Ibrahimovic quiet, and then when he goes off, you know, he, scores, he scores three more goals afterwards, so I think that says a lot about Mr. Corker, I think. And you know how good he is compared to Ryan Shawcross. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Matongan at left back. Um, and then I play a three, but it goes to, it can go, it's, like a, it's either a four, three, two, one, like a, like a wide two, it's not two wide forwards, or a four, five, more like a four, five, one really, but it can be on four, three, three. And in three would be, in the on the right hand side of the three would be Clint Dempsey, in the middle would be Sandro, on the left side would be Tom Carroll, and two wingers, Bale, Lennon, Adebayo up front. And my own idea is this, that one of the reasons we looked so good last season, and even the seasons, let's say, we had Modric and Van der Vaart, but without Ben Lennon, we really, really struggled because we couldn't play three teams. Now, admittedly, that was the season we had um, Jermaine, Def- Jermaine Defoe and Crouchy up front. We, you know, it wasn't that. You know, you know, it was Crouchy or Jermaine Defoe up front or Pav. It wasn't someone added by all. So even if we wanted to play through the middle, we just didn't have the quality that we needed to go play through the middle. But... Basically, we're strongest when we can attack three ways. We can go straight or around the sides, you know. So basically, jab cross, hook, hook, and that's when we're strongest. We can attack both sides straight and around. And I think we miss that, and we do. Without Tom Carroll, I, mean, I think without a Luka Modric or, say, a Tom Carroll, who I think can knit these things together, we're really strong. And people say, why Tom Carroll? Because, and there, we need a Luka Modric star player. Is he a Luka Modric star? Is he a good Luka Modric? No way, he's not even a a six or a tenth as good as Luka Modric but he's got passion and desire and he wants to play for the club you know he, you know, he comes through the ranks he knows how important this game is and for me sometimes passion and desire can you know can, can sometimes not all the time though but can you know help you know, help out and I think look Huddleston for me I'm not saying he lacks passion and desire but I don't think one thing Robbie Fowler if you watch the, if you guys watch the ITV4 game and when we play, play Maribor because look I like him. I think he's a good player, but he slows the game down. To play his game, he slows the game down. And a very good player who was, who basically failed in the Premiership wasn't failed. They just didn't do as successful as people thought. Was Juan Varon. Now Juan Varon is a much better player than you know Hudson will ever dream to be. But both were the very same. They both had to slow the game down. And I think honestly, I think Hudson would be, would be great in Italy or something like that, where it is a slow paced game. He'll be given a lot more time and space just to work his magic. But I think in this country, it just doesn't work. It's too quick, it's too fast. And now, other countries like Italy and Spain, especially, you know, Spain especially, have caught up and they are a lot more quick. They have increased and the, the, the tempo is a lot faster. I think Carol, and this is the way I do it, I think we need to get the ball wide. We're not allowed to play for the middle. However, Arteta and Morsha aside, maybe Hazola, their midfield three isn't really going to put a foot in as much as, say, our, our um, Kung Fu expert, Mr. San, Mr. Sandro. Cordero, I don't know, Guimiri or Ranieri. He's not, you know, he, he'll put his foot in, you know. He'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, put the, foot, he's got the old Kung Fu kicks in, but no. All jokes aside, no, I think, yeah, he can put his foot in. I think if we can win, you know, he can probably beat the shit out of them, get the ball wide, or give them to Carroll. Yeah, that's, that's all his job, is just to keep, get, win possession, and that's it. Because if they play, and I think they're going to play, we can't play. We don't like to out pass Arsenal. They they can string passes round, you know, round around circles against us. It's Cazorla, Arteta, and um, Wilshire 
are much better passes, you know, much better passes. So we're not meant to play the game, but we can outmove them and outwork them. You know, and for me, it's like a Carlos uh, Condit Nick Diaz situation. You know, ultimately, if we don't play their game, if we just say, you know what, we're not going to play the game, we're going to use our movements, and we're going to be very smart about it, and we're not going to play the game on your terms. Then hopefully, I think what we can do is actually beat them. Because I think we have the movement and we have the runners. You know, we have the pace to beat them. Obviously, I think the pace that I'm looking for is attack Carl Jenkinson. I think if he's going to be playing at left back, he, he, he's he's going to be their weak link. I mean, Sang Sang is Bakari Sang is a good player. Carl Jenkinson. What this is what how I do it. I'd have Aaron and bombing forward, and then you've got he's got two targets. He's got Bale and Adebayor to you know to hit to hit to. Hit to. At the same time, say say Bale drops forward. This is what I think we should do. Dempsey bombs forward, and Aaron Lennon pulls back. So then, Carl Jenkinson is the left back. He thinks, wait a minute, do I go with Aaron Lennon or do I um, stay with um, you know? Do I stay with um, you know Clint Dempsey? Who, who do I pick? Who do I, that runner? And if we keep that into play, that that will mess him up. And the other thing is, for example, supposing Bale drops back. Supposing you know um, this one Bale and say Carroll sort of positions. Yeah, just to make, yeah, because obviously he's got a sweet left foot, and I think he can develop a pretty good cross for that. Yeah, you've got Adebayo who'll be in the box, and you've got the late runner that is Clint Dempsey, and then you've got Carl Jensen, who do I pick up? And you've got Aaron Lennon, even if it goes past him, you've got him on the side, he's got two targets, he's got Dempsey, Dempsey and um, Adebayo to aim at, you know, for a low cross. So that's the thing we have to do, we have to get it wide, that's the secret to beating them. I think defensively, are we stronger? Probably. I think man for man, we would be. I, I would like to think we're stronger. Apart from say Walker, I think Walker. I think Sanya is a much better right back than say Walker or Norton are. But I think man for man, I think we're just as good. I think it's about even. I think goalkeeper, if we play Friedel, yeah, because the key is a distribution, and that's why he's playing Hugo Lloris. His kicking distribution skills are, you know, much better than Brad Friedel. I like Brad Friedel. I think he's a good goalkeeper. Lloris is a great goalkeeper, and great goalkeepers have to be able to. It's like they have these sweep keepers. They have to be able to make that pass. They have to, you know, the game's evolved, and for AUB, the guy who's swallowed, he seems to have swallowed this coaching manual. He's a left brain I have got three badge in the coaching. I don't know. That's, that's a really bad impression. But do you know what I'm saying? He, you'd think he'd be like cutting edge. I mean, do using this stuff. You know, it's all this high line shit. You know, but yeah, that's how I do it. Um, there is a more. I um, there is. A, I'll put you know my thoughts up on this. If you, you know, if you can get through this rambling about why I think we should play this way. And now on to Mr. AVB. Now, for me, I never want to enter Villa's bias. I think there was a lot of history of Chelsea, and they say, "Why well, would not go for Laurent Blanc? He's not. He's not. He's not proving the Premiership. He's a foreign manager." Well, AVB wasn't even proven. He came to the Premiership, failed. You know, I mean, when you have a team like Chelsea who are as wealthy as they are, can buy any amount of players they want to, once a team like that is struggling, you know, in the league, because let's finish it. Not only did we finish above them, Newcastle finished above them in the league. And that, I think, says a lot. And the fact that we finished above them in the league, and so, so did um, um, Newcastle, says, says quite a lot, you know, about his, his managerial skills. I mean, I know... Um, you know, Deontay is turning it around and he's got them playing the way he wants them and he's got some, you know, he's been, he's been on a bucket load of money so he's brought in Hazard and Oscar and they're playing some incredible football. But, it's, I if you look for me, if this is just my perspective of it, he's, AVB's never been proven success in the Premiership. For me, it reminds, I mean, and they, we've we failed with this foreign manager before, whether it was, whether, whether it was Jack Santini, Ramos, Christian Gross, I mean, the only manager that did really well here was um, foreign manager-wise was Martin Yol. That's because he actually played in, played in the country. He knew the country. And having managed in Holland, Holland produces so many coaches. It's beyond a joke how many coaches Holland produces. You know, if there was one argument against this, that, you know, we weren't, you know, we obviously were tiring towards the end of the game because we weren't able to finish games out. Because, look, we weren't able to convert our chances. But if you look at the team there in 2006... Honestly, I mean, Lady King, yeah, Carrick, Lennon really wasn't the play he was then. And we had a pretty, you know, we didn't have a really good side back then, you know. Not really, if you compare to what we were, you know, who we were competing against. But we did remarkably well for a team that wasn't that great. And I think that's the, that's the thing people forget. I mean, he got us punching above our weight, not once but twice. And he's doing the same thing with Fulham. 
And again, if you look at Harry, Harry people have got Harry in that look. For me, for me, after the England Hulk, England's job, they barkle and everything else, he was going to be fired. I think Levy lost trust in him. Whether he trusted him in the first place, we'll never know. That you know, he failed to back him in you know, the Champions League season. He failed to back him last season. Or just didn't want to. He just thought, you know, this guy's a bit of a risk. And maybe he, you know, he's looking after the club's asset. And obviously, there's always been that rumour that he doesn't want to saddle the club with too much debt because, you know, the more debt the club has, it's harder, it's harder for us to sell. And we are a profitable club. That's one. Make no mistake about it. We are an extremely profitable entity. Um, one of the things that you know, as I said, look, would I wanted Harry, Harry Redknapp? You know, would I want to start AVB? No, I never really wanted him. I thought he was a Chelsea reject from the start. I thought he had too much history. I think, look, we all learn from mistakes and. He may, may he may be you know he may be more listening to his his his, you know, his um, players. He may be taking the, their ideas on board, and I always believe this. I think if you're the coach, you have to it has to be your ideas. And I think Harry Redknapp once said this, and I'm not a Harry Harry lover or a Harry hater, but he said, look, when he went to Man City, that crucial Champions League perf game, he goes, well, you know, I've always said, well, should we play five in midfield, just the one up front? But you know, he thought, no, I thought I should go for it, and he, and apparently he disagreed with his coaches. And they asked him, well, well who, you know, who were they? He said, yeah, I can't, I can't say that because, you know, it's not fair to them. Obviously, everyone's their opinion, but ultimately, I have to make the decisions. And I believe that the coach has to make his decisions. But when the coach is making the wrong decisions, and he's making them not out of spite, but out of sheer stubborn-mindedness, it reminds me a little bit of, say, Glenn Hoddle. Glenn Hoddle, great player, wonderful player. One of the greatest players in our history. But as a manager, he never really uprooted the truth, did he? At Chelsea, he wasn't fantastic. You know, people say, oh, he's got a foundation. Not really. He built, he, he had to be something, but it was a guy like Rude Hullet and Viali that really made it into what it was with their contacts and their ability to get the play they wanted in. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, if you, if you look at it from that perspective, you know, that, those were really the players. I don't, for me personally, I don't see um, guys like, um, you know, and I think, you know, Glenn Hoddle, I mean, there were, there were rumours about this, but, you know, apparently Dennis White had a massive argument with him. He said, look, you know, what shit, he kept saying, yeah, these are our principles of a few players. Look, we're going to play the best football, but we're in the fucking bottom three at this rate. You know? You know luckily for him, he was able to turn it around. But I, I never understand why he went to Chelsea when there was a Spurs job. But And then when he was at Southampton, he, you know, he had a clause. that said, you know what, I can go anywhere. You know, I just have the one job release, and that is for Spurs. But I don't know, I always felt that really weird. But for me, I was thought Glenn Hoddle wasn't a fail as a manager, because I just don't think, I just never thought of him as being a very good manager. At Spurs, I don't think he was a good manager. And I just think ADB, not because he's, you know, like, and you have to be a great footballer to be a great manager. Mourinho, uh, Wenger, um, Ferguson wasn't even that great a player, you know. But I think it helps, you know, but being a good coach is meaning more than that. And I think maybe they want to get bring in Stefan Fry. Maybe they want to make him the manager, like, you know, do, do a yo or something, because he doesn't know the premiership. He doesn't understand the premiership as well. And I think... A German coach or a Dutch coach, someone because the Portuguese look at the end of the day. The reason I wanted Laurent Blanc, and one of the reasons was that he took a Bordeaux team that wasn't very successful, helped them win the league. You know, and they, they were never they weren't a great side, but he you know, he made them to, to you know team a bunch of other ways. So going above Lille, yeah, because you know, people forget that Lille, Eden Hazard, Lyon, you know Benzema, all those guys. You know, they're they're flush of, flush of cash for what from all that. Um, Olympic, Mar you know, Marseille. PSG obviously later on and he got them to win the league title and plus he has, he's actually A, he's played at the highest level so he knows he's been around some of the top coaches top players you know and but also he's able to take a team and actually make them into a good team that's why I would have gone for Laurent Blanc or Roberto Martinez who if you look at say Wigan I've, I've seen something at the VW the stadium looks half empty at times you know I feel sorry for the guy you know they just Wigan is a rugby league team they're not going to have enough critical mass for a rugby, you know, for a football team. It's just it's just not there. But someone who knows the Premiership, who succeeds, who's either played in the Premiership, has got a very good idea of succeeding in the Premiership, or basically taken a team and got it punching on his weight. Porto, uh, to win the Europa League, is an achievement, don't get me wrong, but it's not something to cry home about, you know. Champions League, that's something completely different. That, and Marine doing that with Ch with um, Porto, that was an amazing achievement. But Europa League, no one really gives a shit about it. Let's face it, we don't. It doesn't. It's just been a be it's a very devalued league. It's valued in Spain and Portugal and Italy, but you know, the, but you know, yeah, but not even Spain really. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you know, you're not going to be facing the real top powerhouses in Spain, are you? Compared to, you know, 
you know, you know, compared to say in Portugal, you, 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 know, you I think the one he won was like an old Portuguese final, with like Braga, who aren't that really that great team. We beat them home and away, I think, in, in the Europa, in which means the UEFA Cup back then. So I think that's it all, really. I don't, I don't really see the Europa League success as being an amazing like, oh my God, we're in the Europa League kind of thing. Um, but he is the manager, and I think we should back him. I still think that the these three games, honestly, if he loses these three games, I can see him being sacked. I can really see him being sacked because you know because Daniel Lee's taking a huge risk in signing this guy. If it doesn't work out, I can see him being. I really can. And maybe Stefan Freund, yeah, because you know Stefan Freund was successful for the German team, but I don't know how good that is because obviously they produce like a thousand good players you know a year. So I don't know, but I just don't think. I think the jury's still out. Results, you know, you know, I mean, we got a, because let's face it, it was like, oh, we're fourth. Yeah, we were fourth, but we were playing well. No, we were not playing well. We were very lucky at Man United. We were very lucky at Southampton. Eventually, your luck will run out, you know? Yeah, and I honestly think that I don't want to be winning team, you know, beating teams on the basis of luck. I want to be beating teams because we just are a better side. And I think we can be. I think picking, you know, because, you know, you've got someone like Bradford, he's a great goalkeeper, but he hasn't got a year left. I don't think he'd be kicking up much, much of a fuss. Hugo Lloris is the guy to be putting in there, and he's thinking, oh, shit, what the hell did I do? Maybe I should have left. You know? We've got to sort this thing out, and I think it's got to be done, done now, and I don't, I think it will come down to the fact that, I think we, w do I think ABB will stay as manager? I'm not too sure. I hope he does, because I, I hope he's successful. I really do, but I'm serious to have my doubts. Anyway, uh, thanks for Super Spurs for mentioning this AVB thing. I and I hope that helps. And thumbs to Harry Redknapp. It's just because you know what. After the tax trial and everything else, yeah, all the support. I think Daniel Lee felt betrayed, and it came from the top. I think. I think there's been rumours for years that you know because I remember going on talking about the Arab money, which or where was the Arab money that he he heard some rumours about. That they have been rumours for years that he needs to be looking at sell, get us into the Champions League because obviously. The Abramovich deal it didn't happen. Almost did happen. People forget that Abramovich almost did buy us. It was either us, Arsenal, Chelsea. He looked at Arsenal and thought, shit, you know, all that, this Emirates Stadium, or it was Ashburton and Grove, as it was called then. Nah, it's a massive thing. I don't take that risk. Tottenham, well, do you know what? I have to spend a lot of money buying a place, guys. They might not improve. Chelsea, on the other hand, they're in the Champions League, so I can easily attract the players. And then we thought, within two years, you got on what? You know, you know Ranieri, you then put in Mourinho. Bam, and the rest is history, really. So anyway, um, I hope you know you enjoyed this video podcast. Please click on the ad links if if and when they appear. And yeah, FB me, tweet me. Yeah, it's always great to hear from you guys. And as always, calm you Spurs. Uh, shout out uh, to my most loyal follower, I guess, Super Spurs. And uh, Portuguese, uh, well, I saw Zaha. I think he's a good player. So yeah, you've got a good one. Hold on to him. Hopefully, you can get you to the Premiership. Come on, you Spurs.